Chad, you know what I'm excited about? Power Monkey Camp is coming up very soon. And you know, one of my favorite parts of Power Monkey Camp is the food. Rosie Jo Meals and her amazing food that she provides to all the campers and the staff throughout the entire week. What do you think about Rosie Jo and her stuff? Incredible food. You know, not only do I get it at camp, but I also get it here at home uh, with the meals that she delivers. And, you know, I've heard so many campers say that same thing as well. It's one of their favorite parts of camp. It's, it's why I think our return campers come back, not for us, oh, yeah. but for Rosie, Rosie, Rosie Jo. Absolutely. She ships nationwide now. She's a Texas girl. The portions are huge. You guys will absolutely love it. She's also the chef for the 2020 CrossFit Games athletes and provides regular meals for some of the top athletes in the CrossFit community. It's, if it's good enough for the top athletes, it's good enough for you guys. We love Rosie Joe. We love Katie and her staff. Her meals are absolutely amazing. Chad, do you have a favorite? Yeah, no doubt. I just ate one of my favorites for lunch today, actually. It's the honey mustard chicken thighs that comes with a um, mashed butternut squash, which I did not think I would like, but it's delicious, and Brussels sprouts as well. Probably my all-time favorite, though, Dave, are the banana pancakes. Banana pancakes, amazing. Her scones are legendary. Everything that Rosie Joe makes is a hit at camp. Guys, you can bring this at home with you now. If you head to rosiejoemeals.com, that's R-O-S-I-E-J-O meals.com and use the offer code PMC10 for a 10% off your meal order when you spend $100 or more. Check out Rosie Joe Meals. You guys will not be disappointed. Welcome to the Power Monkey Podcast, where we chat with the best in the world about what they do. We invite coaches, athletes, and industry leaders in our community who are willing to open up about their setbacks and successes to educate and inspire our listeners. I'm your host, Dave Durante, with my co-host, Chad Vaughn, and on today's episode, we interview Paul Tremblay. Paul is an incredible person who has worn so many different hats within the CrossFit community. He was a CrossFit Games athlete as an individual, transitioned and being part of the demo team for a number of years. He's also one of the L1 staff members. He is an affiliate owner and he recently assumed a new position starting just a couple of months ago. Now he is the HQ contact for all of the affiliates up in Canada. Paul's an amazing guy who has some great stories. Uh, we talk a little bit about his time being on part of our Power Monkey Camp staff as well. We were lucky enough to have Paul out with us to help out at our endurance station a few years ago. And also a little bit about what's been going on in this past year, his new role, what he sees this new format looking like for the Open into the Games, pluses and minuses associated with that, and some of the things that he's excited about with the new leadership that's in place with CrossFit. Enjoy this episode with Paul. All right, Paul. Hey, man, it's been a long time, man. Good to see you. Good to see you guys, too. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for joining us for sure. Hey, I uh, wanted to jump right in here. You know, you've been to the CrossFit Games as an athlete, but you've also done a lot on the demo team. So, you know, when Jordan said we were going to have you on, first of all, I was just excited to, to chat with you. But that's kind of the first thing that came to my mind. And I'm because I'm, I'm always been curious as to how different that is. Can you, first of all, just give us a little bit of a definition of what the demo team is and what they do? And Tell me, is it harder being on the demo team than it is an athlete in the CrossFit Games? <laughs> it's harder on the ego, that's for sure. Um, <laughs> it, it's it's funny. I've I've become like the, uh, you know, I've really settled into this role as the demo guy, um, <laughs> and and it's, we we often talk about it, and it's really cool. It, it's given me a lot of opportunity, to be honest, and you know I've been able to still kind of stay in the game and meet the right people, and and it's helped me get to where I am today. Um, but definitely, obviously, you know, you, you want to be part of the games and, and being invited to be on a demo team is an honor, but you always kind of wish you were on the floor competing with everyone else, obviously. Um, is it harder? Probably not because, you know, the, the spirit and the intensity of the competition is, is impossible to reproduce, right? And right. oftentimes, like we would test workouts and then we would sit there and go like, there's no way anyone could do, you know, sub eight on this workout, for example. Mm -hmm. And then sure enough, you'd see a couple guys do sub eight, <laughs> you know, it's just like, or, or a couple of girls. And it was always kind of like that. So the intensity, you know, we always wanted to go as hard as possible for Dave. Cause it was, you know, we didn't want to let him down and, you know, you get invited to be on the demo team. It's not to shit the, you know, shit the bed. You, you want to put up some good time. You want to be able to kind of watch the games after and say like, oh, you know, I could have done that or, or whatever. But um, 
the the hard part is just the kind of uh, is is the stress that goes with the announcements that mm-hmm. are at the games and the stress of just being on call for Dave mm-hmm. uh, 24 seven uh, when we're at the games and it's like, you know, we get a call at 5:30 AM and it's, you know, get the whole team to the stadium right now, you know, for example, like mm-hmm. we're, we're about to test the workout that's going to be performed by the athletes in two hours, you know? Mm-hmm. So uh, there's a couple little tweaks that they want to see. And, and, you know, we're there to just go through the workout and see if, those tweaks make sense. And so that, that part was kind of challenging where, you know, there's literally no, you can't say no. So, right. I mean, if, if Dave says you got to test this now, um, the answer is yes. <laughs> or the answer is, you know, why are you here? <laughs> right. right. <laughs> yeah. So, but it's been really cool. Like I was really lucky. I did it five years in a row and then I was overlooked last year. I like giving Dave a hard time for that <laughs> one. I like to think it's because I'm Canadian and I couldn't cross the borders. Couldn't uh, definitely the reason. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. So it it has nothing to do with just getting older and less (laughs) fit, but um, yeah, so it's been really fun, you know, five years in a row. The the toughest one to swallow was the first one when I was Mm -hmm. in 2015 where I I missed the games by just a handful of points. Mm -hmm. So it was pretty devastating. And then, you know, obviously just went on from there. Yeah. At that point. So so you've had, I was just Go gonna ahead, say, t- 2015, there was still regionals, right? So you, you, yeah, 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 it was still regionals, and it was still epic battles at the regional level. Right. It was so right. fun, you know. And we had Fraser in our region, obviously, mm-hmm. you know, Vellner and uh, Alex Vigno, and you know, guys like Austin Maliolos, mm-hmm. Spencer Hendel, mm-hmm. James Hobart. Like those were all names oh, yeah. that were still in the mix, you know. So I had Craig Kenny. So those were really, really fun epic battles that we had a regional so that year i missed it by a couple of points and then the year after again a handful of points mm-hmm. so um i was really close a couple of years and then you know once um we, regionals was 2018 i think that was the last year so after that yeah. it was just uh you know some sanctional tours and things like that yeah but you've had a variety of roles in the crossover world right i mean you've basically done everything there possibly is you've been an athlete at the highest level demo team stuff, your affiliate owner, uh, you're on L1 staff, and now you have a new role within CrossFit as well. Um, it's first off, what, what's been the most interesting and the most fulfilling for you in terms of all of those roles? And can you talk a little bit about what this new role is in terms of you heading up the Canadian portion of what CrossFit's uh, happening up there? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, you say I've, I've had a lot of roles or different hats in the CrossFit world. I definitely have almost, you know, hit a lot of the different roles. I don't know if I've done really well at them, but I've definitely dabbled in, <laughs> in all of them. Um, and for sure on an athletic level, obviously making it to the games and being, you know, at that level and then being invited to the invitational team that year in, in 2014 uh, on like a personal, you know, athletic fulfillment, that was definitely uh, up there. So that was definitely the highlight of my career, if you want to call it in CrossFit was, was doing the invitational. And again, the people that I met there led me to, you know, getting closer to the people I needed to get close to, to eventually get invited to, to do other really cool things. Um, but definitely the, the most uh, challenging so far has been this role. Uh, really? This role. Yeah, absolutely. So since can you explain it a little bit so our listeners know exactly yeah, what it is? Absolutely. So I, I, um, I'm the country manager for Canada now. So um there's been an, an initiative within CrossFit for the last couple of years to give um, a little bit of a more of a voice to local markets or more of a, a representation. And we've had country managers in, in France with Daniel Chafee and in the UK and in Africa and a little bit around the world, but it was never uh, extremely formalized. And now with the new direction, the new leadership, there's been a, a little bit of a shift in focus and, and more resources put towards getting more boots on the ground in, in markets outside of the U S. So um, I, I went through the interview process. I applied, I heard that the job for Canada was open and I put my name in the ring and, and uh, I got it. So this role, I, I fell into it in December, 2020. And I say challenging because obviously the last year uh, for a number of reasons was re- really hard for uh, affiliate owners, mm-hmm. you know, not just 
the, obviously business owners, but CrossFit business owners uh, had a little bit of an added uh, added difficulty to that one. So it's been challenging, but it's been great. Um, and, and the whole purpose really is just to get closer to the affiliates, give them a voice, increase the communication between home office and the affiliates, and uh, overall just provide a little bit more value for, for the affiliates. What have you noticed uh, in the past year in terms of uh, affiliate numbers throughout 2020? Are things starting to pick back up over there uh, in Canada in general? Are things still kind of nebulous in terms of being able to open up? What is the, the affiliate scene looking like right now with everything that happened last year? Um, so with, with the COVID situation, we still have two of our major cities that are technically in lockdown. So uh, Montreal is actually allowed to open on Friday for the first time. They were able to open for about two months in the summer, and then they've been locked down since. And I'm, I'm talking more specifically gyms in that industry. Um, so they've been, them and, and Toronto have been the most locked down regions um, in Canada, if not North America. Like there's not a lot of other spots in North America that have been locked down that long. And in Toronto, it's actually just two um, areas of the greater Toronto area. So not all of it. Toronto has about 6 million people. So about, you know, two, about half the population is still under pretty strict restrictions. And what's really odd is that some regions in Canada have been virtually open this entire time with restrictions, obviously. But um, I don't know if you guys heard of this one, but there's some restrictions in the West, on the West Coast. It's Gyms are allowed to be open, but they can't do high intensity interval training. Really? So, yeah. So <laughs> they're allowed. So I got, I have affiliates in BC and British Columbia and Alberta who are open, right. And they're allowed to be open, but by definition cannot do CrossFit. Wow. <laughs> right. So wow. if, if, if we were to give the policymakers a definition of CrossFit, oh, well, it's constantly varied functional movement executed at high intensity. Well, then they would say, well, you cannot do that, right? So it's, it's been pretty tough navigating that. And the affiliates have time to work on your handstands and your Olympic lifts. It looks like that's what I was going to (laughs) say. Sounds sounds like we're going to turn all Canadians into weightlifters. That's okay. That's, that's hilarious because that's exactly what some affiliates are doing, Dave. It's like, they're, they're bringing it down to bringing the intensity down and bringing back the basics. And it's so funny to see a wall walk come out of the open, you know, Oh, yeah. where it's like a very basic gymnastics movement, very often not done under intensity. So, we, you know, we've Absolutely. been doing wall walks for years, but always in warm-ups or how to, you know, warm up the overhead position, how to get people upside sure. down and practice that. And now it's like, okay, well, we can do that. Just try and go really, really fast while you're doing <laughs> it, you know? So um, <laughs> that's some of the, uh, some of the restrictions that we've been navigating here. In, uh, I'm in Ottawa and we were able to open up our gym in February, we went through, I guess, three lockdowns. So our third lockdown mm-hmm. was right, right at Christmas, all the way to February. And uh, we're almost operating business as usual. We have some restrictions on numbers and, and time that uh, athletes can actually be inside the building. But everyone is so happy to get back inside and work out with people yeah. that it's just, they could, you know, they could say whatever restrictions, we don't care, we're, we're here we're excited to work out. So it's, it's been right. fun. Yeah. I've been noticing that too. I think it's just this need to be around other people starting to be exposed more and more and like how much we are social beings and like that aspect of actually going to the gym and, and seeing your friends and, you know, whether or not you're working out, it's just being able to talk to someone and be around them. is just such a needed piece to us. So uh, it's good to see that things are opening up again. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. I was just going to say, it's interesting because they're, through this whole pandemic, a lot of people have been saying, you know, like, oh, the, the online presence is, is increasing, you know, online fitness, interactive fitness on Zwift for, for cycling or, you know, mm-hmm. look at Apple Fitness now. And, you know, how is CrossFit going to adapt to that? And, you know, are people going to want to go back to the gym? I say, man, the, you're seeing the proof right now. Mm-hmm. As, soon as, as soon as every single gym is able to open, it is packed, like without uh, exception. Every single affiliate owner I speak to. It's just like, oh yeah, we're open. Like we, we, the, 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 the place is packed, you know? Mm-hmm. So especially I think in our community where it's so important to, you know, to have that community feel in your workout and have that presence of a, working out with a friend and pushing each other and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. I don't think that'll, that'll ever be lost, especially not in CrossFit. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. I think it's uh, something we all miss quite a bit, especially who we got used to it and uh, hopefully get that back. Uh, just the friendship too. I know personally, I've been like struggling with trying to figure out, all right, I got to go see some people again. I want to go and like, I love my wife and I love my kids, but I want to go see some other people as well <laughs> once in a while, you know? Okay. Oh, careful, yeah. Dave, yeah. careful. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Make sure she doesn't listen to this one. But I, I wanted I wanted to ask you something else about the new position. You know, CrossFit yeah. itself went through a pretty drastic change over the course of the last year or two with the fallout of everything that happened um, in the summer. And you've been around for so long and uh, had such close connection to what was going on over there. I'm curious to get your take on new leadership, uh, how Eric is doing, what your feeling is like in terms of the direction of the company now, how it's maybe different and kind of what you're looking forward to uh, as being part of the organization. Yeah. Um, what, what's really interesting and what I'm finding is that a lot is different, but a lot is exactly the same in terms of like caring for the affiliates um, and, and, you know, wanting to, be there for them it's just now there's more of a medium so and, and I'm, I'm speaking more of like uh on an international basis so like here in Canada we never really had um that much of a direct contact with home office but if we do talk to the people at home office right like they still cared and wanted to do anything to help affiliates and I'm I'm seeing this now like with the correspondence with some affiliates it's like you know, it's always the, the care for the affiliates has always been there. And that's what's kind of refreshing because we're, we're taking that and we're just going to try and blow it up. And we're mm-hmm. going to, we're just going to try and actually, you know, um, have a little bit more boots on the ground and, and, you know, having more representation in different markets. And I can't really speak of the U S really, but for us in Canada, we're still relatively a small market. You know, we only have a couple hundred boxes here and um, there's still room for a lot more. So the new direction with CrossFit is, is, is exciting. You know, there's, we know that there's a lot of work and a lot of the stuff that's, that's being put into place uh, quickly is, uh, is pointing towards, a, you know, pointing towards a, a bright future with, like I said, communication with the affiliates, more value for the affiliation. There's, there's things coming down the pipeline that are just really, really exciting. And, and you know, I, I joke about it, but when I talk about, you know, bringing affiliates back to the brand. Um, I think back of when I opened up the gym in, in 2013 with my business partner. And it was like, I didn't want to open up a gym. You know, like there was no interest in opening up a gym. There was interest in opening up a CrossFit gym, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, and, and, and that's when, that's where my passion lied. And that's where, that's what I think a lot of people have to remember. Like we fell in love with CrossFit. We fell in love. We didn't fall in love with functional fitness. We didn't fall in love with working out fell in love with CrossFit and what it meant, like what it, what it did with us, you know, and, mm-hmm. and what it did with you and your friends and how it introduced you to other things and like how it brought you to weightlifting or gymnastics after it brought you to different in- interests. But like, you know, um, I think there's, there's a lot of new things coming, but staying true to our roots as like the methodology and what we really believe in and love, boom, it's CrossFit. So uh, mm-hmm. we're excited. Yeah. 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 I think that that's awesome. And, you know, I've hear, heard a lot of people talk about it, uh, the importance of how the games actually fits into all of that, right? Is the games necessary? Does it actually benefit the affiliates to have the competitive side? And to me, they kind of go hand in hand. You know, um, they, they feed off each other. You know, the, the people training day in and day out love to see the, the phrases of the world and the, the tears of the world, you know, do what they do on a regular basis, but at the highest level. So even though the, the regular CrossFitter is not ever going to go to the games, the ability to see what that looks like and to cheer for someone, there's value there. I think there's value back to the affiliates in that sense. What do you, what do you think about the games is, role in, in, in CrossFit? And do you feel like they're separate between what the affiliates are doing and actually the games? Or do you think that they have some kind of um, symbiotic relationship, essentially? I think they're super important. I think the, the image and the marketing that the games has for CrossFit affiliates is, is huge, but it needs to be leveraged. It needs to be done properly on an affiliate level, but also on a CrossFit level. It, it's up to CrossFit to, to be able to give affiliates some tools on how to bridge that gap between mm. someone who just wants to work out and someone who sees the games and is inspired by that and decides to work out. So um, I always also say like, there's no chance 
there's more people walking into your affiliate because they heard about the CrossFit Games than people not walking into your affiliate because they heard of the CrossFit Games. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's still, yes, it is still a little bit intimidating and there's still work to be done there, but the power that seeing that elite and seeing that, you know, what the tip of the spear is for our sport or for our methodology is still super important. And, you know, being able to tell that story as CrossFit is important as well. Right? Mm-hmm. A lot of people can tell that story, but it's, you know, CrossFit still just, it's still a brand. It's not, it's, it is a sport, but it's, you know, it's, it's a brand. And, and we, you know, Dave came up with this with, you know, the, the games at least. So it's like, you know, we, we can, uh, we can still kind of control the, what's being said about it and, and, and help it grow. But yeah, absolutely. Like the games, obviously I'm sold. I'm, I'm a huge fan of the game. Mm-hmm. And what it, I think what it's done for, for our gym and for other affiliates is, is huge and it's just making it mainstream. That's all. So let's, let's pump that game's media. Let's keep it coming. Love it. Love it. You doing yeah. the open? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh man. I am doing the open. I'm like, I'm getting a serious shot of like, Hey, you're out of the game type of thing. I feel <laughs> <laughs> that's what I feel like right now. Cause I, I did super like in my head, I finished 22, 21.1 or point two, finished that workout. And I was like, so fired up. I was so excited. I beat my time from 27 mm-hmm. or 2017. And like I, I did in 10, 17, I'm like, man, that's a six. Nice. Score. Like, and then just, I start seeing scores coming in and coming <laughs> in and, and like, I'm like, wow. <laughs> you know, where where i where i think i am and where the guys are now it's so impressive it's so cool and chad like, did you do it i have not done that one yet no i'm being pretty lazy this year with this i'm just what is listening to all on? the stories with, from other people like paul here you, how are you getting prepped for camp man we're gonna have to have all these workouts you're gonna get crushed this camp come on uh, no I'm, I'm ready i'm good I, I did it the other day and i haven't been able to walk for three days so that's a good it's indication not. that <laughs> well, what, what was your yeah. what was your time there dave uh 17 minutes flat i beat okay. my time from 2017 see now oh, yeah. now i can do it now i'm inspired and motivated to do it because i know what you're oh, I would lo- <laughs> yeah I, w- I would love you to give it a try <laughs> we, we got a we got a classic time chaser on our hands over here then just wait exactly for you to do right it. exactly right yeah. I, and Dude. i didn't even hear what your time was paul i don't even want to hear what that was that's just Scary 10, right 17, there. Man. Yeah. 10, 10, 17. Uh, yeah, that's no joke. No well, joke. you know, maybe I, if I use a, a 10 pound dumbbell and do five burpees instead of 15, <laughs> I might be able to get 10, 17. Hey, infinitely scalable. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Well, you know, in, in that sense, in, in all senses of, of the CrossFit Open, what are your thoughts about how it's being run this year? We've got three weeks going. You know, what do you, what have you thought about the workout so far and how it's all going to lead into the games and everything? I, th- I really like the new format. I think it's really cool. The um, I, I'm almost like realizing as the open goes on, what the quarterfinals actually means and what 10% of open participation means, right? Cause I'm looking at it now and it's, you know, just as an example for the, so we talk about the quarterfinals, which is two weeks after the open. So mm-hmm. the open is, is now, you know, even more accessible and even more just for everybody. It's just a party. It's a party yeah. for the community mm-hmm. and anybody can participate. And now we're just going to say, okay, well, you you want to take it just a bit, a bit further, 10% of everyone who signed up in this category do quarterfinals and 10% of RX males is still in North America is 8,000 people. Mm-hmm. So there's a, you know, there's a big amount there's a lot of people who are going to be moving on to quarterfinals which is really cool i'm starting to see this at our gym we have you know 20 to 30 people who are going to be heading into quarterfinals different divisions and you know male female and rx scale and things like that or sorry rx and and age groups but that whole thing is really cool because it's going to bring instead of the open obviously being five weeks it's gonna it's it's almost bringing a nice little bang at the end of the open but a couple weeks later. So mm-hmm. I don't mind the, the, the three weeks. It's been kind of cool. Like I was saying this to someone this morning, like I, I kind of like it that, you know, there's just one more, <laughs> yeah. just one more here to worry about. And then, uh, and then we can do the quarters, but unfortunately I don't think, I don't know if we'll be able to do a semifinal in Canada this year because it's supposed to be in Montreal and the semifinals, obviously that has to be in, in person in uh, regular times. This year is probably going to be online, but I like that process. I like, hey, let's make the open as, as accessible as possible. Everyone participate. Let's have 
let's have some fun and then let's do the quarters we've we've tested this system dave tested this it's age group qualifiers that they've been doing for years and it works Mm -hmm. and we we've always said hey there could be a little something between the open and regionals back in the day that could filter just a little bit more because the open is you know there's a lot of people in there so um it's cool I, i i like that process this podcast is going to come out uh, slightly after the announcement of the third workout, but you have predictions okay. on what's happening uh, week three? Yeah my, yeah, my prediction was uh, originally, I was like, okay, we need to see something heavy. But now that I rethink the system and rethink the progression, I don't think we need to see something heavy in the open. You know, before it'd be like, hey, we have five workouts. We need to make it more of like a complete test through five weeks. I don't think the open needs to be a complete test anymore. Right. Mm-hmm. So the, 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 the quarterfinal can, can be, so I was thinking we were seeing something heavy. Now I'm just thinking you might just bring it back to some straight up you know, light thrusters and chest and bars. I like was say, I'm going to see Fred or something. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine. No, my prediction is uh, a seven minute AMRAP of Fran. Mm. Oh, right. Chad, 95 pound bar. No, no, no. Only if you. it's 135. Only if it's 135. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I wouldn't, I wouldn't hate Fran at 135 either. That probably hurts a little less. Oh, my God. Yeah, I agree. No, I, I agree. I would, I, let's not do that one. Let's not do that one. You're signed up, though, eh, Durante? I think I saw you put up a good score in 21.1. Yeah, so I, I put up a good score, but uh, the internet crushed my, uh, my, my post because uh, we were just doing it at our affiliate here in town in Portland at, at CrossFit Tiger, and uh, I mistakenly started on the ground not standing. So, um, I didn't get a valid score because I did it incorrectly. So, um, I unfortunately started incorrectly. And so my time was just not, not worth it, but I, uh, I love that workout. I actually did it again. And unfortunately, like my knee was not feeling so great and I did a few seconds slower, but, um, yeah, that workout was right up my alley. And, uh, unfortunately I wasn't able to submit, uh, the score that I thought I originally got. So, for all the people out there that, yeah. for all the people out there that, um, you know, commented on my mistaken start, it was not intended. I, of course, would not put up a score that was not valid. I am not trying to check. Why would I put up a video of me knowingly doing it wrong? But, um, of course. No, no, I, no, no. You're a criminal. You're a cheater. The internet <laughs> says so. <laughs> that, that's what it, it sounded like. So uh, I apologize to all the people out there that clearly saw that I uh, did a bad first rep. Well, now I wish I would have signed up. I would, I would have won by default there, right? <laughs> yeah, you would have. <laughs> Competition one wall over. walk. That's right. That's, well, it. that's all you needed. That's, that's all you needed. <laughs> one, one correct wall walk. That's it. What was your, what was your time on that? Uh, the unofficial the poor time was 1229. Bro, that's fast. Yeah. That's so fast. That's just up and down the wall the entire time. No breaks. Yeah, the, no, the, the wall is fine for me. And actually, I did fairly well in the double unders. I did um, unbroken through the 150s. And then I did, I think, three breaks on the 210. So um, I was actually feeling good on the double unders. Uh, I actually could have gone a little bit faster. I was trying to pace myself. I didn't feel terrible at the end. I was like, oh, you know what? Like, this is the first CrossFit open workout that I was not incredibly sore afterwards. The first yeah. one in my 10 years of doing open workouts. So I was like, have all right, you, finally. Have you, have you ever done a workout with 55 wall walks in it? No, no, <laughs> never. Just that, um, I mean, I, I used to program a lot of wall walks too, but I never saw a reason to do that. <laughs> yeah. Dave, Dave always fast. surprises us. I was very happily surprised with that one though. Or what did you guys yeah. think about the, uh, the down and up on that for a lot of people? I mean, coming back down and kind of, Flopping, flopping down, down a hard and everything kind I mean, of that's what i did yeah that's what i did man i was my i i tried it twice because i literally feel like i got hit in the face in the first <laughs> one i was like man i i thought i was going to finish it no problem you know but it was going to be hard and it just absolutely rocked me i was in the sixes i looked at my jump I'm like what's going on like what the hell is this why am i feeling this way <laughs> So I, I redid it. And uh, the second time around, I'm like, I need to spend the least amount of time possible upside down. Mm-hmm. So as soon as like my way down was just, mm-hmm. I was crashing. I was making sure my hands were there, but I was trying to come down as fast as possible. Did you have a mat or anything on the ground or were you just straight onto the hard ground? 
Yeah, I went matte because on my first attempt, I felt like my I was going to lose my big toenails on both my feet. <laughs> so the second time around, I'm like, I got to use a mat and just plop down like a like a belly flop. But I love it. I love it. it. Yeah, more handstands. That's what I'm hoping for. Third workout, more handstands. Forget yeah, about exactly. the barbell. Forget about the barbell. Oh. Uh-huh. They'll, they'll save that for later. Save it for later. Yeah. The, the important stuff actually. is saved for later. That's right. Yeah, That's exactly. Right. Paul, I want to bring up a story because I want to get your take on it and see if your memory uh, is as good as mine when it comes to this. So I don't remember how many years ago. I think it was maybe about four years ago. Um, New York. New York. Yeah. You, you and I with a group of other people with Reebok out with a Guinness Book of World Records trying to break a shit ton of records all around the world. They were doing event in London. They were doing event in New York and LA. And they were trying to break the most number of world records in one day. And they had a lot of us out. And um, I was doing some handstand uh, records to break. And I don't know if you were trying to do more than one, but I specifically, you seeing you try to break the number of wall balls in a minute. Yeah, in a minute. Number of wall balls in a minute. Can you, I, I try, yeah. can you tell the story on how you remember it? Because I remember it as well. I just want to make sure that our stories line up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, so the way, you know, like, I think it was like two or three weeks before the Reebok guys sent us an email. And like, these are the, these are the um, records we want to break. And we knew who was where. So, like, we had Fred Agidius, Annie Thor's daughter. Dan Bailey was there. Yep. Uh, Katrin, Camille, maybe. Yeah, uh, Camille was in Los uh, Los Angeles. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, like Scott Panacek, I remember Panacek was there. Yep. And it was like they gave us a list. They're like, "Hey, just put your name beside what you think you can do." And I remember seeing the wall balls, and then there were thrusters. The most thrusters performed, or the most weight lifted in a thruster, for one minute and three minutes. And that one, I just decided to do. Do you remember? I just decided to do straight through. <laughs> I'm like, just have multiple bars set up. <laughs> I'll do I'll do as many thrusters as I can at 135 for a minute. I won't drop the bar. I'll just keep going. And then at the minute mark, I'll just pick up a lighter bar and do the three minute. Boy, was that disgusting. Mm. Like, imagine, like, that was such a bad idea. I picked up 75 pounds. I think I did, like, five after because I did, <laughs> I did, like, 38 thrusters at 135 mm. unbroken. Oh, my yeah. God. And then I picked up 75. I'm like, this is stupid. I even... Even I had an empty barbell in front because the goal was like, hey, when you can't do a weight, just pick a lighter weight and just keep moving. Yeah. But even then, that, that didn't really work out well. But uh, I don't even know. Do you remember if those records even existed before? Or we just like we set them. I don't know. I don't know. They, they might have been new records that were put up that didn't exist. Yeah, I think we just set the record. So it was... Uh, it was obviously we were going to make, there was another gentleman there that was breaking his own records on like push-ups oh, yeah. And, yeah. and things like that and like pull-ups and, but one of them was the wall balls for a minute. I'm like, I can do this. You know, I, I, but do you remember the standard? Like I had yeah. to, yeah. So, so Chad, they couldn't tell you if you were getting the rep or not. Mm. So it wasn't like in a competition where it's like, no, that one doesn't count. No rep. You right. just do it. Right. You do it after they have a few judges from a few different angles and they they get together and like how many did you get how many did you count so i do the wall ball in my head i'm like unreal 38 they come <laughs> yeah. back they're like 32 i'm like Ooh. what i i yeah. thought the first time they told you did like 18 like it was like first oh, round it was like 38 reps you were like holy <laughs> shit that's crazy and they were like 18 reps <laughs> like, how are you judging? You know like, this is crazy. <laughs> it could have been that. It could have been that. And then we, I think I remember we switched areas because it was, they really needed to see the whole ball over the 10 foot target. So we're, we're used to just hitting the mm-hmm. target sometimes, you know, used to that. And it was the whole ball. So I ended up trying it three times after mm-hmm. my second attempt. I was at, you know, I just, I wanted to get the amount of reps that I thought I was getting. So after my second attempt, Panchak comes over and he's like, do you want me to give this a shot? I'm like, no, get the hell out of here. <laughs> like, get out of here, Scott. I got this one. And uh, yeah, finally I got it. And I think it's the record's 35, but I remember I did 37 and then they gave me 35 and I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll keep it at yeah. that. And that was on top of all the thrusters that you did too. Yeah, it was on top. Oh my so, God. 
Yeah, so three times. I mean, you know, a minute effort, max effort wall balls three times with some break in between. Mm. Wasn't too, too bad, but I was hurting after those thrusters. Well, yeah. you, you have the world record now, so you have yeah. something to be proud worth of. It, worth it. Is, is it fair hey, to it, say it, you it, like squats? I mean. <laughs> I like squats, yeah. I mean, I don't like squats. I'm just, yeah. I, 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 in, in a way, I've, I've you know, I'm, I'm decent at them. But it's, it's for a wall ball and for speed, the, the way I squat is just built for that. It's built yeah. for speed because I, I can't go all the, I can't go off the grass like you do, or I could, but I mean, I, it's so tight that right when I'm below parallel, it just brings me back up, right. you know? So, right. um, I don't know if I'm really that strong. I just, I think my, my body anthropometrics, uh, makes that, uh, I can squat a lot of weight, but yeah, that was, that was super fun. Yeah. And Dave, Dave, Dave. I was going to say, Dave, how did you do there? Oh, I had an interesting experience too. Um, I was there for strict handstand push-ups in a minute. Yes. Freestanding. Free, freestanding. Yeah. And did and you when do I 38 got there, as well? You got the magic no, number of 38 quite, too? Not quite. Not quite. But I was, one, I was like, what's the record? So before I even agreed to do it, they, I asked them what the record was. And they told me 21 was a record in a minute. I was like, um, so like I tried it at home and like, I got like 22 or something. And I was like, okay, like I can at least get around the record. I'll give it a try. So I get there and they're like announcing me because they were like filming it. So they're like on this day, Dave Durante will give a try, you know, for this record. And the guy so goes, official. yeah, yeah. And he goes like, and the record is 28 that he's trying to beat. Hmm. And I was like, 28. I was like, he told me 21. Like, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like yelling at the guy. I was like, you told me 21, not 28. And like they go off and they, they confer and they look it up and they're like, we're so sorry. We told you the wrong record. It's not 21 is 28. And I was like, what? I was like, this is ridiculous. So I was like, already just like devastated. Cause like I had my head around, like, this is the number I'm talking, I'm shooting for. So I went and I ended up doing 24. They gave me 21 or 22 or something like that. I didn't get the record. I tried two more times and I ended up right around low twenties and I, I didn't get it. So I didn't get the record. And then I watched the guy doing it. Super strong guy. Uh, but it was, would not be a standard that I would say was a full mm -hmm. repetition. <laughs> right. I wouldn't say that We're, limbs were locked out on each rep, very short in range and everything. So um, different than I was at what I was training for. He was probably not in a, like a true handstand, right? He was probably like an active handstand. He's probably just like a, an acrobat. He, yeah, he was in a huge arch, like an enormous arch, like barely getting his chin down to the ground and was not fully locking out in every rep. And I was like trying to do nice tripod position, trying to keep form. So it's not the thing that you want to be doing when you're trying to break a record, but uh, all things that would have been helpful for me to know beforehand. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was a family affair. You brought your wife, you brought your child, you had like a yeah. brand new baby, right? Yeah, exactly. My daughter was like two months old at the time or three months old. So uh, we got to hang yeah. out in Brooklyn for the day. You know, we were living in Manhattan anyway, so it wasn't far for us to go and hang out and see everybody. Yeah. Where are you guys now? Are you still in Manhattan? No, uh, we are in Portland, Oregon now. My wife's from out here. So we moved out here a couple of years ago. So we're on the West Coast. Oh, now. wow. Yep. Cool. Yep. Chad, what record do uh, you think you got in you? I've got all the records I'm going to get, I think, Dave. How many how many world records do you have, actually, Chad? Right uh, two. I might have a few more more uh, master world records in me in weightlifting, but uh, nothing CrossFit related, I don't think. I'm not going to be doing – well, I, I could I could maybe do a good number of wall balls in a minute, but uh, pro probably just shy of, of Paul there. But Hey, do you remember the, cro the, the CrossFit liftoff? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Man, they should, Absolutely. They should bring that back. They should bring that back. Yeah, that I, I, I talk about that a lot. It's so sad that it, it went away. And I, I really, uh, I mean, I, I um, run the USA Weightlifting podcast, but just to be honest, I think that was really on USA Weightlifting for kind of looking over the opportunity there and letting it go. Cause that was back in what, 2010, I think, wasn't it? Do you, do you remember Paul? 2010, the CrossFit, 2000 the, the CrossFit liftoff? Oh, no, no, no. I'm thinking of something else. I'm thinking of um, the the CrossFit uh, and USA weightlifting combo uh, event that was towards the end of 2010. But yeah, you're talking about something different. The liftoff, the liftoff should definitely be done again, for sure. Yeah, that was that was cool. It was a good way to like, just, you know, 
everybody loves to lift, right? So let's yep. go. Let's uh, put your, put your scores out there. Well, <laughs> <Everybody>. yeah. <laughs> Well, it's what you hear a lot, right? It's like, yeah. oh, you know, I need to get, I need to get better at CrossFit, so I'm just gonna lift. I'm just gonna lift. Well, hey, that's great. Lift and put your names on the, put your score on the leaderboard here. So, but it's just ahead, another Jeff. way to be, to be more inclusive. You know, the, these events that are bringing more people in. And uh, to be fair, you know, it's been said a lot here lately, but Matt Frazier has an Olympic lifting background, and you know, look at what he did. So, yeah, oh, he of course, moved, as well, right? Yeah. Most weightlifters aren't anywhere, have anywhere near the ability that he does in everywhere else, but there is something to be said for that ability. Yeah. The foundation is there. Yeah. 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 So, uh, Paul also want to let listeners know that while your CrossFit credentials are incredible and you're obviously an amazing lifter, you also had a role with us at power monkey camp as one of our endurance station coaches uh, oh, with, yeah. with Chris Henshaw a couple of years ago, you joined us at camp. Can you talk a little bit about what your experience was like at camp and uh, whether or not you'd ever come back and hang out, hang out with us again? So I had no idea what I was walking into Dave. I had <laughs> no, seriously. I, and on a good thing, on a, on a good note, like I didn't know, you know, I kind of understood the camp, but when I got there, I really got to feel, what it was like and it was like literally a, a camp for adults and, yeah. and when I left there I was like this is what this is this is unreal people get to just unwind we're on a lake they get to meet new people they were living in cabins we're you know we're, we're eating in a cafeteria and then in between those you're just learning from some of the best coaches in the entire world so it's like it's, it's a crossfitters you know dream summer camp basically <laughs> which was really cool and I, I you know, obviously I got lucky to, to um, have the opportunity to go with with Chris, and they they kept introducing me as the the fast twitch guy, but I I was there to support right, so uh, it was really cool because I got to learn a lot from from Chris obviously and, and Facundo that weekend. I didn't get to participate, so I don't have that feel of, of you know the the participants uh, and what they get, but it was uh, it was really fun. It was cool. The environment was awesome. It, it, the best part about that was the people who were there learning were so excited to be there learning. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what makes the, the coaching sometimes just a little bit easier, mm. right? Oh, yeah. Knowing that oh, the, yeah. the people they're, they're there because they want to hear every, every little thing that you want to tell them they're there to hear it. And, um, and I, I was actually surprised because a lot of it was, it was coaches it was coaches wanting to be better coaches, not necessarily mm -hmm. just better athletes. So I thought that was a really cool uh, twist to it as well. It's like, Hey, this is a, a fun camp. Come have fun, uh, learn, you know, how to become a better athlete. But at the same time, there's always that little twist that a lot of them were affiliate owners or mm -hmm. coaches themselves. And it was just, they were there to learn how to be better coaches at the same time. And that's why it's a continued education course as well for level three. And, and that's, uh, that's obviously a big bonus, but yeah, I, I'd be very down to come back. I'd have to bring the family though. <laughs> mm -hmm. How many kids you got now? Uh, I have three, three. Uh, nice. Do you have three boys? I have two boys and a little girl and my wife is actually pregnant. She's, um, Oh, congrats, man. Yeah. Thank you. She's 30 weeks. So nice. we're, we're yeah. almost there. Yeah. Yeah. Bored, I saw man. you, uh, yeah. on social media pegging your little boys with little, uh, balls, like playing dodgeball. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> oh man i was so like get, get up in the house and uh, you know COVID and everything you start figuring out new games to play with them and just we got to do something we got to do something how old are they now the yeah. boys they're uh four two and a half and i got a one-year-old girl and uh it's just it's really cool they're they're at the age where they're they're having fun together now like they're mm -hmm. they're, they're they're little pals and uh the older one just drags the younger one into all the stuff he wants to mm -hmm. do and that that day I took the video and it was I swear it was like the 40th time we did it <laughs> and they looked like kind of lazy in the video but the first 10 times they were running from one side to the other of the room and I'm just trying to peg them as hard as I can and uh it was it was really cool it was fun but we uh we lucked out because last summer last year right before COVID hit we had decided to finish our basement to have kind of a playroom and um obviously in the winter here we go outside but not that much because it's super cold and and then COVID hit so like it's cold we can't go anywhere mm -hmm. so we had that base and we just had so much fun just you know 
learning how to play hockey down there and love it all yeah it's great well you're welcome to bring the kids it is a kids camp in the summers yeah Uh, it's it's utilized primarily as a kids gymnastics camp in the summers and the two um camp managers uh bj and osh who live there full time they have two little girls too that basically run the camp you know they're on four wheelers hauling ass around camp and um that's why i like bringing my kids too because they get a little taste of what it's like to live kind of out in the country a little bit so if you do come back please bring your kids and your wife i think they'd love it well i i do remember that perfectly durante when i saw you and your i saw your your little girl walking around i was like man this would be this would be really cool for the kids yep. to be around. I mean, it'd be a hell of a job for my wife to, to run after them while, <laughs> while, I, while I'm doing a, a station rotation. But uh, yeah, it'd be cool for sure. Chad used to bring out Ella too for the first, I don't know how many camps when she was yeah. young enough to still come and yeah. hang. Yeah, first Never four or five back out again, man. Yeah, no, for sure. We we may try to get her back out there either the, this go around or the or the next one. So she's going to be yeah. an athlete pretty soon, ready for the stations soon enough. I know, right? Well, she can probably run the run some of the stations right at this point. <laughs> she can do a better job at my station than I can, I'm sure. How old is she? Uh, eleven, eleven, yeah, eleven oh, and cool. a half. So yeah, yeah, she's. When's the next camp? Coming up in about five and a half weeks. Uh, first week of May, so May second through the eighth. You know, we obviously outdoor events were hit pretty hard for us in 2020 we did host a a camp in the fall that was with really low numbers but we're uh we're excited to get back out there i think uh we're just all excited to see each other again you know just just to be able to kind of hang out and catch up with everybody you know we're on to our 15th camp now so everybody's like family man we're you know we we miss each other it's like a big reunion every time we go back out there so as much as we love having new campers. Uh, for us, it's like seeing family again. So I'm, I know I'm very much looking forward to it. That's what was, uh, was surprising as well. I, I, there was a lot of repeat campers. Eh? Yeah. I remember mm-hmm. the, the stat there that one time. I was like, wow, that's crazy. People, are, people come back. That's really cool. Yeah, we've had people come back. Like there's a woman coming back that's coming for her 10th camp. And, awesome. you know, it's really cool to see because, like, you know, the information, you know, it changes slightly from here to there. But people are really coming back because – they feel a connection, right? They feel a connection to what we're doing. And I think when Chad and I kind of first started camp, <clears throat> the intention was to create a really great in- informational week. Like we're going to bring out the best coach we possibly can, g- give a great informational week. And it's turned into an experience, you know, something that kind of changes people in a lot of ways where you're creating lifelong relationships. Um, we've had marriages come out of camp. We've had kids be born out of, you know, relationships that come to camp, uh, job opportunities, people that started out as campers that have moved on to staff that have moved on to being full time with us now. So, you know, camp has totally morphed into something that I never intended and am pleasantly surprised uh, at what it is today. I'm, I'm actually very, very proud of uh, what it is now. So I'm not trying to do a sales pitch or anything. It's just, <laughs> it's a pretty sweet week. It's awesome. It's a blast. Yeah. Well, and, and I'm sure, I'm sure people will be excited to get back because, I mean, obviously, but it's in Tennessee, right? So, I yeah, mean, yeah. It's about 30 minutes down the road from Mayhem. Yeah. I mean, COVID is, is done down there anyways. There's no COVID in Tennessee. I don't think anymore. there ever was COVID in Tennessee. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you guys, you guys will be fine. Yeah, we're, we're looking forward to it for sure. Chad, are you? <laughs> <laughs> oh well of course yeah no i mean that's i was gonna say you know all that that you just said there dave is absolutely makes i mean we're non-stop there just almost 24 hours a day for the entire week but yeah, yeah. it makes it really easy and, and what you said earlier paul that all the campers that are there they they want to be there all the coaches want to be there and when everybody wants to be there and they want to learn then they're eager uh it absolutely makes coaching easiest the easiest easiest coaching i ever do um so it's it's like it's not even about, you know, uh, being good and, and being, or being a good coach and trying to have to figure things out. There's nothing to figure out there. It's just easy. So it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And no. what a hell of a training week too, right? Like people that they, I mean, they were working out three, four times a day. Yeah. Like a, almost <laughs> like a little taste of a, it's a training camp. It's a learning camp, but if you want to go there and, and work out, like there's a, crew oh, yeah. that they were going yeah. down. It's, it's funny. When we first started doing camp two, we didn't anticipate that people, it's funny. We created a camp for fitness and we were shocked when people wanted to work out as much as they actually did. People would go into the gym at like four in the morning, three in the morning when the lights off, they wouldn't like, just like, 
you can't do this people like <laughs> you can't go in without us but we didn't know we had to tell people that until those things started to happen but yeah i think initially we were just shocked that people wanted to work out as much as they actually do at a fitness camp now we have to tell people like first couple of days take it easy by the time thursday and friday come around you're not going to be able to move so like yeah. take it very easy don't go overboard everybody's excited to kind of be here but take it nice and slow the first couple of days i think uh, mayhem has been a good addition because well it's always been there but um you know that that kind of helps calm things down Break a little bit up. in, the, mid in yeah. the middle of the week yeah uh, paul yeah. you know you're you're doing a lot of coaching now too um mm -hmm. how do you feel as a coach right now you have so many roles like we talked about but does coaching play a kind of a, a really important role in, in your daily life? Do you enjoy that portion of kind of what you're doing to be able to work with people and interact with them regularly? Yeah. Like I, it's something I'll never give up. Um, whether it's at the affiliate level or level ones, uh, because it's, you know, it's, I got into this CrossFit because I wanted to work out and, and, you know, admittedly I opened up a gym cause I wanted to work out and I love working out. And it was always something that, uh, that I enjoyed doing. And that's, that, that passion has morphed into um, wanting others to feel that as well. So I, coaching is great. Coaching, you know, the air squad or making sure people move properly is, is all gravy. Um, but what people feel when they work out, like I want them to feel the way I feel. It's, it's, it's funny it's hard to, to explain, but you know, when I, I know no matter how down I am or no matter how tired or I don't feel like working out sometimes, if I do how much better I feel. And that's right. kind of the, you know, that's what I never want to stop trying to give people. Mm -hmm. And it's like, sometimes I say it, like, it's so simple, just work out. You'll, mm -hmm. you'll feel so much better. And, and, you know, a coach is, is there to facilitate that in a safe environment, obviously, but to like, you know, encourage people and inspire people to keep doing that because we know how important it is um, and how great it makes people feel um, at, at an affiliate level I don't I coach maybe three times a week now at mm -hmm. my gym the, the new job has, has taken me kind of away from that uh, and the level ones I'm, I'm doing less of them but I think it's it's important for me to stay connected with my community at the gym and it's important to stay connected with the community at large in Canada for the world as well. So, mm -hmm. you know, obviously, um, obviously I, I still want to do it and it's still a big part of, uh, of my life, uh, both for fun, but also, you know, for the job and for understanding, um, you know, the needs of, of the athletes and of the, the community and the affiliates. So mm -hmm. uh, it's, I'll, I'll definitely never stop doing that. I love it. And, uh, you know, we had Michelle Tondra on a couple of, a couple of weeks ago on the podcast and talking yeah. to her about her, her coaching and, uh, transitioning from being an athlete to a coach and now starting, starting DECA comp and things like that. And obviously she's coaching a lot of elite competitors. Uh, have you ever had any interest in, in, uh, training anybody like a Vellner or anybody else to try to go to the games or are you predominantly feeling like you make the most impact when you're coaching that everyday CrossFitter? Um, that's a good question. It, it, um, I think it comes down to the joy of programming as well. I don't really enjoy programming to mm -hmm. be honest. Um, I, I, I don't particularly like programming even for myself or for people. Um, so the, the coaching aspect, I would love to coach anyone, but not like it, it's gotta be more than, than programming. I, I need to see them. Like I, mm -hmm. the, the, re, the remote programming, um, I've been asked to do it, uh, many many times and i never say yes i've never done it um that that human interaction at the gym with the everyday people like that's that's way more fun honestly like at a higher level the coaching is important but it's also you know coaching those high level athletes like you just it it goes more than just coaching the movement specifically it's you know there's a lot of mental uh stuff that goes into it and they just have to push it and want it themselves uh i think it's uh it keeps it more fun and it's just, uh, it's simple coaching at the affiliate. And, um, yeah, I think it comes down to like programming. I don't really enjoy doing it. So. Yeah, that's fair. That's yeah. fair. I think that's a, uh, it's a very honest answer to just being around people. I think a lot of CrossFit coaches do best with that too. Just understanding that being in person, that's why it's been so tough this past year to not actually see their members. And, uh, so hopefully we can get back yeah. to that very, very soon. Yeah. Um, we're getting close to the end. 
Yeah, yeah. I was just going to add to that. It's just the the. I'm not saying that the coaching a high level athlete is just about programming either. There's a you know that yeah uh, it's sure a, it, it it's a relationship and that's why like the best duos are the best duos coach athlete are mm-hmm. the way they are because of the relationship they had. It's mm-hmm. not just about uh, programming, but uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Who was yep. your coach? Did you have a specific coach? Um, never, no, not really. I, I dabbled a little bit with Henshaw and Secundo mm-hmm. where they would program, uh, my aerobic capacity stuff. Um, and early, early on, I had a coach in Montreal and, and Michelle helped me out leading up to regionals in 2018. Um, that's, it was literally because I did, didn't want to program for myself anymore. Mm-hmm. I was annoyed with it. Right. And, uh, we were having another baby and regionals was like, and I, was, I just called Michelle. I'm like, Hey, do me a favor. Just mm-hmm. program for me and coach, coach me at regionals. And she did. Mm-hmm. Cause nice. she's a, a great, great friend in person. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, never had a, a specific coach really. Now with, with the new year going on uh, and Fraser out of the picture, do you have someone that you think can step into that and fill the role appropriately as the new guy to take down? Yeah, he's gonna hate me, but yeah, Velner. I, I I'd love yeah. to see Velner, Velner go and win it. Uh, I'm a fan, you know. He's a friend, but I'm also a fan of of what he's done and how he's uh, he's come up in the sport and how he's he's stayed a, a staple in the sport. Um, and you know, he's he's multifaceted. He doesn't just he's not just an athlete. You know, he has a full time job as well, and um, he's a smart guy. So I, I like him. He's mm-hmm. a friend, and I, I'd like to see him succeed. You know, because he's been really close, and he's just had little fuck ups excuse my language, but uh, I remember, I think it was after 2017, I think after the games we're at the after party, we we're drinking. I look at it and I'm like, man, like, I didn't think that you could win, but after watching you this weekend, if you don't fuck up, you could win. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you <know>? And, <laughs> nice. and he, he was like, yeah, I know, man. Like, thanks. You know, like, yeah. if I don't mess, if I don't mess up the swim workout, then I, I'm in the mix. <laughs> And uh, no, I'd, I'd like to see him go uh, and do that. And what's kind of really exciting too for us Canadians is that there's so many strong Canadians now, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. um, it's, um, it's unbelievable. We have like 10 Canadians in the top 50 in the open right now, something like that. Um, and it's just like a big step from, from where we were in like 2012 when we had one Canadian at the games or two, right. We had mm-hmm. Albert Dominic LaRouche, uh, right leading the way for us and obviously the girls did a great job michelle and, and cammy but uh no it's cool uh i'd like to see a canadian on the podium but if it is a canadian i'd like to see velner love it yeah i'd love to see that yeah. too with gymnastics background i would love to see yeah. uh, uh a male crossfitter with a gymnastics background <laughs> do well you know we haven't really seen that yet it's always on the women's side or a weightlifter background who, who kicks yeah. ass on the men's side there so there you go there i'm, you I'm go. on board Funny. with velner Funny story about Velner, the first year that he was at regionals or second in 2014, that's the year I went to the game. Um, and the, that year it started with, remember it was a, a Max Hanks match, but it was immediately followed by a uh, handstand walk as mm-hmm. far as you can, but you had to come down at, you had to come down at hundred. You remember mm-hmm. that Dave? Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, I was there. Yeah. Like, yeah. And uh, so I snatched like 275 and I got to like 90, 90 feet, which was a huge PR for me. And I was excited, you know, and I finished, I start the weekend with a win on the snatch. And, and then I see this other name at the top and I'm like, who the fuck is Todd Zellner? And like I said that to, to Albert, we were in the warm up area. He's like, it's that guy. He's like big curly red hair with like a headband. I'm like, that guy, like, what's going on? And he, he had only snatched uh, 205. And we were in the back and we were just shooting the shit. And that, this is when we became friends because we immediately chirped each other. You know, he's like, uh, like, yeah, I walked the whole way. I just came down and then I walked back. How'd you do? You know, on the hand, say, well, <laughs> I'm like, well, I mean, I, I snatched 275. What'd you snatch? Like, 205. I'm like, well, that's cute. That's cute, you gymnast. But no, it's, uh, that was when he came onto the scene. Love it. Love it. Well, I can't tell you how much I appreciate talking to you, man. Uh, it's been it's been way too long, and like I said earlier, I hope we can do this in person again at camp or maybe at the games or someplace. But uh, yeah. definitely in person the next time. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah. Um, well, before you it. jump off, you. 
Before you yeah. jump off, we got a couple last quick questions for you, okay? First Let's one, go. easy. What sport hopefully. or discipline do you prefer? Yeah, hopefully. What sport or discipline do you prefer, weightlifting or gymnastics? Weightlifting. Yeah, all right, I, would, all right. I was due. I, would, I was hoping I was right about that one. Yeah, yeah. Chad Chad needed a, a win. Yeah, uh, you, he hasn't had one yeah, in a while. It, so. In terms of like, hey, if I had to compete, if I had to do one thing for the rest, and compete in it, it'd have to be weightlifting. I'd, I'd be a, I'd be a slob in the gymnast <laughs> world. So, yeah, at least I can throw weight. There you go. There you Qu go. Question two: Any uh, particular person uh, that you think would be a great guest for us to have on the podcast? That you haven't already? Maybe a Velner. Um, huh? Yeah, Velner. Velner. Yeah, get Velner on there. You guys can talk gymnastics all day. That's another check in my box Ooh, too. I gotta yeah, get. Yeah, that's true. Maybe not Vilner then. Maybe not. We'll hold off for a little while. I think. Unless I can get a hold of him beforehand, and I'll 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 give him a little yeah, side money. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Say weightlifting. But, uh, yeah, absolutely no Vilner for sure. I think we even said that with Michelle. She was yeah, she was saying yeah. Paul and and Vilner too. So, um, next question: Any books you've come across here lately that you recommend to our listeners? Any books? Yeah. I'm, I'm terrible, man. I, it's, I don't read. No, that's okay. I don't read books, but it's, and it's uh, something that uh, I actually, that's hilarious. You asked me, I actually bought a book today on Amazon. Really? It's getting <laughs> delivered tomorrow. Yes. Because I'm, I sit in my bed and I watch an episode of the office or Brooklyn nine, nine every night for 30 right. minutes before going to sleep. Okay. Right. And Brooklyn nine, nine I'm, is the, is one of the best shows on television too. If nobody watches yeah. it, I've seen every episode. It's amazing hilarious but i'm like my third time through and i just don't want to start a new show and the, i it, i could just open up a book and read for 30 minutes for and sure. i'm gonna try and do that so i i bought uh we're a couple country managers we're together today and we we're chatting and uh a recommendation was uh never split the difference so i bought that on amazon right away it's gonna get delivered so i'll read that and let you know how it is there you go we'll have to check that one out for sure but i'm guilty of that too man i watch you know, when I'm trying to wind down at night, I watch too much Netflix or uh, whatever else when I could just have uh, even 10, 15 minutes of reading a book would make a big difference for sure. Yeah, exactly. But, um, yeah, Paul, it's been great to talk to you. Um, like we've said before, it's it's been too long and hopefully we can run into you again here pretty soon. Do you have any parting words for our listeners? Anything coming up you want folks to know about? Um, coming up? uh not not really uh just follow along you know for, for what's what's coming up for crossfit there's a lot of really cool programs coming for affiliates and uh there's this on-ramp program that's a big marketing tool that we're doing uh the home office is doing as well so it's there's a lot of cool things coming but hopefully i'm really excited for madison i really really hope that we can have somewhat of a games you know uh crowd Right. So that we, we can bring the community back together because yeah. I think CrossFit needs this so much right now. Like we need, yeah. you know, a real event where we can see each other face to face, where affiliate owners can see each other. We're real people. We all, we're all doing the same thing. And, and you know, I, I, I'm, I'm excited for that. And I hope to see everybody in Madison. Yeah, it's, it's time. And I hope that happens as well. We, we've certainly look forward to that. And remember, if you want amazing meals delivered right to your home that can be keto-friendly, gluten-free, vegetarian-friendly, head to rosiejomeals.com. That's R-O-S-I-E-J-O meals.com. And use the offer code PMC10 for 10% off your meal order when you spend $100 or more. As always, we truly appreciate you guys listening in. Be sure to head over to powermonkeyfitness.com for services and up upcoming events. Um, also, check out our Instagram pages for regular teaching and technical content at Fitness at Dave Durante and at Ollie Chad. And on behalf of Power Monkey Fitness, we're your host. I'm Chad Vaughn with Dave Durante. And until next time, guys, thank you all for listening.